Let's do it. Let's do it. Welcome Hello. to the light side of the dark side. It's your weekly freak show coronavirus version tonight because uh, we're not in the same studio. But uh, and Hannah, unfortunately, uh, we were trying to get her on the show, but that didn't quite work. But because one of her favorite actors and one of my favorite actors is is right there, Daniel Roebuck. Really? Well, well, you have to. I have to tell you, my co-host Hannah is a big horror movie fan, big Rob Zombie horror movie fan. Oh. Yeah, he popped up in so many of his movies. He's such a good guy. Yeah, we, I, I definitely a, want to hear about that. Yeah, yeah. and I, I know people want to know he's like, oh, ah, 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 but he's just a nice man and a very, very talented director. Yeah, that's uh, I obviously I I I yeah. I, uh, I noticed that, and I just rewatched River's Edge again, one of my oh. uh, favorite movies because I have a dark side. And uh, <laughs> anyway, before we get going, I wanted to uh, say, people listening, we're both artists. Support Daniel however you can. Oh, that's sweet. Support me however you can. And here's how you can. You can go to audibletrial.com forward slash DMS. You're always on set. You're always out. You probably listen to a lot of audiobooks. Um, You know, I, I not. thank you for saying that. I will now that I know that they're your sponsor. Yes. Um, uh, and so we should all listen to audiobooks. Yes. I, 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 you know, I've been fighting the eyes lately, so... Uh, I've been, I like to read, I like to hold, but I'm getting over it because I can't see the book. So thank well, God for audio. Well, audio. It, the thing about the thing about that is if you're on a long drive and you're trying to pass the time, it's great. Put on a, put on an audio book. Uh, actually you were in Lords of Salem and I know they have the audio book of Lords of Salem that goes into the story in more detail. Oh, I, I never, I didn't, I didn't know that. That's yeah, they did novelization. I think Rob Zombie did it himself, and uh, or collaborated with another writer. And there's a lot of stuff in there that that goes into the backstory. That's my favorite zombie film. I think that's the best. Oh, that's interesting. In in the novelization, Dark Mark. Am, yes. Am I in it? Because because no, I have to listen to it. I will. Cut me out of the movie, so I don't know if I'm in the audiobook. But I love him. Yes, or I'm whatever you want. They've got everything from Shakespeare to smuts. And yeah, well, you, I know, but it, I, that's true. Um, I wouldn't listen to Smut. I would listen to Shakespeare. I'm yeah. hoping to live long enough to do, uh, you know, the problem is when you're just old enough to do King Lear, you're just old enough to not remember any of the lines. So right. I should start learning it now. Yeah, and then may, I, I can see you doing King Lear. Ah, oh, thank you. Have you done Shakespeare? No. No, Okay. Anyway, go to all you know Like, there's so much stuff I haven't done. So, yes. uh, but it doesn't scare me. Like, yes. I'm an actor. I can figure out how to do Shakespeare. If I could figure out how to do, you know, Star Wars, I can figure out how to do Shakespeare. Well, we're gonna, yeah, we're going to go throughout your career because you I like that from... too. Let's see if we get letters from that. Star Wars, Shakespeare, what's the difference? Let's see if people are offended. From Shakespeare fans or from Star Wars fans? I Both. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Star Wars fans, how dare you? <laughs> you never know. You never know. Anyway, uh, people should go to Audible, and yes. there's a way to... Aud- audibletrial.com forward slash DMS. One free book, two free Audible originals. And the Audible originals range from Kate McKinnon does a play. They did a... Uh, William Gibson wrote a script for Alien 3. They acted that out with Lance Henriksen, Michael Bean, okay. and other great actors. Yeah, all sorts of crazy stuff there. Oh. So... John Lithgow has a one one man play. Billy Crystal wrote a play. Kevin Klein's in it, and and that Benning, all sorts of stuff in there. That's it's so great. interesting. Cool. And uh, we also are sponsored by Hustler Hollywood and Spy Associates. So if you're watching this on YouTube or listening to this on our any uh, podcast site you're listening to, we will have links for both those sites. So you get twenty percent off Hustler Hollywood and twenty percent off any order over two hundred forty nine dollars at Spy Associates. So if anybody's spying on you or you're spying on anyone else, there you go. Well, this is good to know. If any of the people from a channel of peace are listening to this, let's keep this secret to ourselves. Yes, uh, that, uh, that's why I just wanted to go real quick. Thank so, you. So, Daniel Robeck. Uh, I joke. You in, I, I'm sorry? I joke. I mean, you're, they're yes, sponsoring you. How God bless them that they're, uh, you know, supporting you. That's yes. Great. Yes. I mean, you know, you need basic necessities these days. Reading is one. Reading. Gotcha. Gotcha. You know, lingerie is another. Sure. And, uh, sure. 
Sure. You never know what's going to happen, so you want to make sure nobody's watching you or you're not watching anybody else. This is how I – this is – let me – Dark Mark, I just happen to have laundry close by. This is how I buy lingerie. I go, hmm, hmm, nice, nice. It's hot. And then I go like this. Very nice. Yeah, that'll be fine. Well, Daniel perfect. Robach has been in everything. Uh, I had – I'm sure you're familiar, although I don't think you work together, but I had – Another great character actor, John Hawks, on the, oh, on the show a couple great, weeks ago. Yeah. I've never worked with him, but I admire him very much. He great has guy. like 150 IMDb credits, but you – and you guys started about the same time. Well, um, I don't have any – other than, you know, poor John has to be a movie star sometimes. See, there's something to be said for being uh, a guy like me who – like, I'm, I'm, I, don't have to, I don't have to star in a movie. I could go do a movie. I could do a day in a movie. I don't care. I'm an actor. I'll do right. whatever, whatever Actually, when you Google, funny. when you Google Daniel Roebuck, what comes up is not actor, but character actor. Oh, really? I don't know I'm if you saw that. No, I never, I never did. You'd be surprised that I don't Google myself as much as other actors. But uh, that is, that's interesting. I did not know that. But yes, it comes up, character actor, which, which you are. Dark Mark, it's weird. You know, when I was a kid, remember we had those books, Oh, What a Character, What a Character. And it was about character actors. <laughs> Uh, so how strange um, that I would read those books and then I'd be this thing. But that's like, as we talk about this, everything in my life goes full circle. So it doesn't surprise me that that's uh, how I'm referred to. And I'm, I'm honestly proud of that. I'm proud yeah. of it. Well, I was going to say, he's had, he's been 150 movies and TV shows. You've been over 250. Movies yeah. And TV shows. I don't like to brag, but um, do you know what's funny about IMDb? It is, you know, I once, when I was a kid, so Dark Mark, you know who John Carradine is, right? Of course. Sure. Of course, sure. the uh, he, big horror movie star, in the, you know, from the 40s to the uh, to the 80s. Yeah, through his, I mean, a huge star for 50 years. He was actually in uh, Bride of Frankenstein. Mm -hmm. He's uh, one of the guys who, uh, he just is there probably for a day or two. But he's in, So he's been from Bride of Frankenstein through The Howling and a few movies after that. And uh, I had an opportunity to, uh, he, he toured with this Roy Radin Vaudeville Review and Dark Mark, that would interest you because yes. it's actually a, a book called The Cotton Club Murders, I think is what the book's about, uh, right. called. And it's about the, the murder of this poor guy, Roy Radin, who used to do these, um, like, like, you know, variety vaudeville shows that would tour around the country. Like they right. would play in our local high school and you'd see him, but... I saw Milton Burrow live, Georgie Jessel live, Jackie Vernon live. Really? All these guys as a kid. And uh, one of the last years, would you believe John Carradine was part of the Roy Radin Vaudeville Review? And it said then that he had been in 500 movies and television shows. And I thought, that's impossible. But, you know, they only list on IMDb one, like Matlock is one, but there were right. 60. Lost is one, and there was whatever nine or the 12, whole season yeah whatever, right i did a show for the catholic channel uh in new york uh called classic in which we watched old movies and television shows and discussed them from a faith point of view and there were 188 of those so like i i realized i'm well over 500 right you count everything as one uh, not that it matters why would it matter you um, have outdone john carradine yeah i don't think i'll ever outdo john carradine but i've uh you know as a child, I thought 500, impossible. And now I'm only 57, so I think, how many more can I do? Well, you know, John Carradine's last movie, if I recall correctly, was uh, some uh, bikini, uh, very low budget uh, kind oh. of trauma movie, so. Oh, it was, well. Something to look forward to. Yeah, <laughs> you know, the thing is you gotta work. Um, yeah. I mean, we're actors, that's our, you know, it's not, it's, it's the gift we were given. So John Carradine, look, I direct plays too. You know, I direct a lot of yeah. stuff. I do a lot of stuff. You write plays as well. Write plays. And we had a, an actor named Bernie Bima, who I met 36 years ago when we did No Time for Sergeants. Uh, I did No Time for Sergeants, maybe 35 years ago. But then uh, I would use him. I knew him from then and I would put him in other plays. And that guy walked on stage on his 94th birthday. I think it was. That's how many he got to before, you know, wow. he, went, he went to his, his glory with God. But you know, he opened a play, I think it was his 94th birthday. And I said, there's got to be a place in heaven for a guy who can like, I would think so, yeah. walk on stage 
on his night. He couldn't remember any lines, but so we, we removed, we removed that, that particular detail from his performance, but he was there and his heart was there and his, you know, his body was there. Uh, it's just, his memory wasn't as clear. That's great. Did you and, let him improvise? Is that what happened? No, we just gave him a part where he didn't really have to say anything. Okay. But he was still there. Well, let's go back. You, you grew up in Pennsylvania, right? I did. Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. The greatest, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Greatest town on earth. And uh, what does this mean to you? Oh, what is that? That's, uh, is that a clown? That is a clown. Uh, that's, uh, um, well, I was in a circus when I was young, but is that, did I? That's where that I'm going mine? with this. Oh, that's where you're going. Oh, my you God. You were the world's was... youngest clown for a while. I think so. Well, I may not be able to claim I was one of the youngest. I probably was. At 12, I entered the circus. I was in the circus from 12 to 13. Uh, and that, that was on weekends, believe it or not. It was a, uh, a weekend circus. So for two seasons in the fall, early winter, I would go out with the circus. Um, it's crazy. And, I, and even crazier, Dark Mark, is I was a, I was a vampire clown. So oh, tell me about that. Yeah, I what like what was I look? I was obsessed with horror movies, and uh, by the time I was twelve, you should know that was like my being a clown was my third career. I'd already been a ventriloquist and uh, an impressionist. And I know that the, the the clown you didn't or you did. I didn't know you were an impressionist and a ventriloquist. Oh yeah. oh yeah, I wasn't a you know I wasn't a professional ventriloquist. I was more like. The, the, the weird kid who carried his ventriloquist all around to annoy his parents. I was mostly that. Uh, and as an impressionist, though, I, I, I did win a number of awards uh, for the Catholic Youth Organization. So I was very, very, uh, I was very, I must have been a very famous impressionist in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. I actually got my first job as a performer paid was as an impressionist. And then they paid me, somebody saw me in this talent show and then they wrote a letter. I still have the letter where they said, would you like to do an event and do your routine? And they, they said, and the payment is $10. And dude, you know, I went home like, I, you know, literally like this. Hey, dad, $10 for 10 minutes. $10 for 10 minutes. How much do you make? Ooh. I can tell you there's no good answer to that. That, that only... I, I might still be, I, honestly, I haven't checked. I might still be grounded. Uh, he said for life, I, I kind of snuck away for a little while and came to Hollywood, but I think he still might think I'm upstairs in the bedroom at my house. Oh. Yeah. How, how old were you when you were rubbing money in your father's face? Uh, probably 11. 11? Okay. Yeah. But bad, you know, bad. You still, $10, $10 for 10 minutes, that's better than uh, half the shows out here in LA when they had stages. Dude, I wish I could make that now, you know? Like, oh, give me ten dollars for ten you make, minutes. You make SAG scale. That's twenty bucks. Twenty bucks. Well, it's a funny SAG. SAG now, um, they could you could work for one hundred twenty dollars a day as mm. a SAG actor, which is less than I pay the nice lady who cleans my house. Right. So I do think that you know it's weird for actors. Although you know, isn't it funny? I had to use that contract when I made my own movie, uh, and that's what I paid myself. Right. So. Obviously, I will work for it if I like the director. Yes. And this, you, do, will you work for that for Rob Zombie, $120? <laughs> if I said that now, I guarantee you, I'd be working for it for $120. Oh, okay. Uh, no, Rob is uh, uh, more generous than that. Yes. But it doesn't matter. I'd work for Rob Zombie for free. Unfortunately, he knows that. So you went to, you went to Hollywood. How old, were you, how old were you when you went to, went to Hollywood? 20. I came at 20 years old. Um, and you got a leading part right off the bat. I did. I did Cave Girl. Um, Cave Girl, which I saw the other night. Um, it's on YouTube. Oh, stop it, stop it, stop it. Here's, here's the story behind Cave Girl that, as, as I know it. It's a movie. I've, I've always seen the post. I've always seen the video box. Yeah. I'm always intrigued. Yeah. But there was like a, like a whole, in the early 80s, like there's, some sort of caveman fetish because Rigo Star had a movie. Yeah, yeah. And then there Quest was the fire. Big, they had like a bunch of yeah, movies. Quest for Fire, and there was Clan of the Cave Bear. I mean, everybody was intrigued. It'd be interesting, isn't it? It would be interesting to go back, Dark Mark, and figure out what the heck everybody was so obsessed with then. Um, well, 
Okay. In, in, the, in the case of the cave girl, I, I could see why. She was really yeah. pretty cute. But. Well, cave girl, you know, I, I like to say about cave girl, it was a teenage sex comedy, but um, there were no teenagers in it. I was already 20. Uh, right. there's, no, there's no sex and it's not really funny. So a triple threat to be sure, Dark Mark. Um, yeah. Triple threat. But it, uh, it, it, I mean, there was one sex scene, but. Uh, did you? Well, it wasn't. I mean, she took down her top and I kissed her. Yeah. Uh, and I cut, I cut, you know, I didn't even have, have the ability. I had more s contact in a naughty way with uh, Cynthia Rulo when she put my head in her boobs. Right. Um, I mean, you know, none of it was terrible, but, um, well, you what, know. What, what I heard was uh, that you auditioned for another role. Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, tell the story. You auditioned for another role. And I auditioned for a people. smaller, yeah. All the, we all were in a big room, like, you know, um, I'd only come from community theater. So we were all in a big room like community theater and everybody's sitting around and, you know, I was reading for my little part and, uh, and he was mixing and matching. And um, I watched one, one actor after another read to be Rex, the lead. Yeah. And uh, on, honestly, Dark Mark, I, you know, like I'm trying not, it's important to not think too much of yourself, but as an actor, you do have to have some hubris. Uh, and I watched and I thought, God, these guys are not funny. And the whole idea was it was going to be like, oh, oh, oh. And then it's a nerdy part. Yeah, it's a nerdy part. So um, I watched it all. And this is a true story. The director says, you know, is, is everybody, the director says, okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, we're done. And, you know, people are like, they're getting their books and they're getting ready to go and they're getting their drink. And he says, is, did everybody read everything they wanted to read for? And, uh, you know, I'm like, yes, what? Oh, my hand's up. Oh, yeah. Could I read for the lead? And he was like, oh, okay. And then, you know what? Everybody was like, oh, they all had to put their stuff down. <laughs> now I'm an idiot and I'm asking. So I read, um, he had me read three different scenes. And then, uh, I mean, it was really quite extraordinary. When, they, when everybody then was done, like when I was done reading, it was like, he didn't ask the question again because he didn't want any other idiot to have to read. Oh, yeah. um, and I went up to him and I said, his name is David Oliver. And it's important that we say his name because he's a great guy. Yeah. Great guy. Uh, and I said, David, um, I will do anything to be in this movie. Like, you know, I'll pay a caveman. I'll be the, the I, whatever. It doesn't right. matter. And he said, uh, he goes, no, there's a part of, I got to just figure this out. Which meant that he realized his dilemma, I'm sure, was that, you know, it's called Cave Girl, but the whole movie is seen, you're with this guy, right. the whole movie. Um, so they ended up, uh, I guess he gave up his choice for the Cave Girl uh, and then took me on uh, to take me on. I, I invite people to watch. I think we have it up on Vimeo. If they search uh, Daniel Roebuck, uh, Cave Girl, A Second Journey Back in Time. I don't know if you could put that in your notes. Oh, really? Right? Cave Girl's Second Journey Back in Time, you'll actually see uh, they were putting it out again. It's been out many times. Mm -hmm. And when they were putting it out, I said, are you guys doing a making of? Or, and they said, uh, right. no. And I said, what if I do a making of? Okay. So I actually, uh, I invite people to watch it. I don't want to tell it because there's some really fun stuff in it. But, um, you know, it's rare that an actor uh, who's, been as blessed as I am goes back to something like that because normally you know the silver chalice you know Paul Newman's not like hey let me talk about the silver chalice you know he's embarrassed sure. by it but uh, I'm not embarrassed by cave girl uh, and this is this is kind of the point because that guy David Oliver gave me an opportunity yeah that you would only get like through an independent film right so sure. he let me star in his movie he trusted me to star in his movie um and that was an enormous, that was an enormous gift. And I make fun of it not being funny. It's just, you know, um, uh, I don't, I just don't know that it, that was exactly David's gift was comedy. You know what I mean? It just, it's a silly it's, movie. It's, it's, it's yeah. I mean, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of edited slow. It doesn't move. Yeah. It's, like, yeah. You know, um, but, I would, I, you know, if I could recut it, it would be about 17 minutes. Sure but I'm, I'm real big on cutting to the comedy. Yeah. So anyway, that's the cave girl story. Is it, was it worth it? 
No, it was worth it. That's a great story that uh, it, it tells you that uh, if somebody's asking you a question and somebody's giving you an opportunity, take it. Exactly right, Mark. Exactly right. So, you know, I, I put this up. This is funny. I have it in this book. But this is a book I'm writing called uh, The Audition is the Job and Other Truths that I've Learned in the Land of Make-Believe. This right. is how much I've already written. It's a big part. Uh, but I make that point that we must always, as actors, be gracious. And maybe, I don't know, are you an actor too? You said, you, do you live in Hollywood? I live in, yeah, Los Feliz, yeah. Oh, you do? Oh, oh, great. So, um, so I'd say we must always be gracious, but here was a situation where the guy asked a question. I didn't, I, I didn't have the mendacity to say, I want to read for the lead. He right. said, does anybody want to read for anything else? Well, I had an answer. And sometimes you got to be very careful because God is talking to us all sure. the time, all the time. He is always chatting to us and we will be like, uh, no, no, no. But sometimes it's so specific and you must pay attention. And that day I paid attention. Right. And it, and it changed my life because Cave Girl, not a great movie, but a guy saw it, uh, Chuck Williams, uh, who's still one of my dearest friends. He saw it and uh, he was working for a, a up and coming Hollywood manager. Mm -hmm. And he took me into the manager's business. Uh, and, uh, and then I got River's Edge. You know, because so Cave Girl led directly to River's Edge. Uh, and I mean, River's Edge was, you know, a very auspicious place to be as a young it's man. An intense, it's an intense movie that still resonates. I think so. They and showed I, it. They showed it. I've It's been revisited a few times, but we showed it in Hollywood. Um, maybe last year I took my kids. They had never seen it. My son being just about as old as I was when I right. shot it. So that was weird. Um, but uh, the movie, you know what's great about it, Dark Mark? It, it's, it looks like it's today. Like, it, yeah, it, 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 doesn't it? It's, it's it has an age like other 80s teen movies have. Yeah, like, and I would say even, you know, they showed it with, uh, they, they showed it with Blue Velvet. Now I don't want any letters, but I'm, this is what I'm saying. Blue Velvet is a different kind of movie. Right. But, River's Edge is ageless. Blue Velvet is of the 80s. River's Edge looks like if you went to Tahunga right now, I mean right now, you'd see kids driving those beater cars dressed exactly the same way. Listening to Slayer. Yeah, right? Listen to Slayer. I mean, yeah. it's, a, it's very interesting to me that Tim Hunter is a, I mean, he's a genius, and so is Neil Jimenez who wrote it, but they, they, they reduced, they re, they reduced, Reduced the um, modernness mm -hmm. a lot. You only see well, cars. There's been some uh, online uh, pieces about the movie that say it really invented the grunge look. The, it invented the what? It invented the grunge look. Nirvana, oh, oh. Pearl Jam, all that a few yeah. years later. Yeah, it, interesting. Uh, yeah. Well, and and that's uh, geez, I wish I could name the the. I'm pretty good with crew names. Um, I remember what the, the uh, designer looked like. She was a lovely lady. I just don't remember her name in this moment, but she was very talented. Uh, I remember this about River's Edge. Keanu wouldn't, uh, she confessed to me, let them watch his clothes. So he was- Really? Oh yeah. They never so, watched Keanu Reeves' clothes. His, his in, clothes that, in that movie. So um, I want you to think if we shot, if he was making out with Ione at the end of the movie, um, well, <laughs> But he's a real actor. I'm not a real actor. You know, I was like, take, oh, these, stop clothes, it, stop it, stop. take these clothes and wash them so that I do not stink the next so day. So is that what it was? It was a method thing is that he, that he was doing? I don't know. You know, it's not. I never. That's the th great thing about acting is you. Every, we all have a different path, right? And you don't. You would never ask another actor what his method is. Although, uh, interesting story on River's Edge I could share with you. Um, you know the movie. So Dennis... Uh, Dennis has that scene before he pops me and he's, and I'm still there and I'm still watching him and he's thinking about Ellie and he starts crying, thinking about the other lady and her. Right. His, he's his, crying. Yeah. The one that he you know? And he's just, it's just a very simple moment. So when he was done, he just, he's, I'm, he, he said like this, he goes, I was thinking about Natalie Wood. No way. 
breaks my heart till to this day because she had she had just she had just died and wow. imagine that they knew each other for 30 years now, how was he how was he to work with other than dennis hopper i mean he was oh, uh he was a godly i mean dennis hopper came